Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share with you. So really quick this morning, I want to talk to you from the topic of United We Stand. United We Stand. What am I talking about today? One of Satan's uh, favorite tactics to use against the body of Christ is division. Why? Because the saying goes, united we stand, divided we fall. And so Satan knows that when people stick together, they are forced to be reckoned with. However, if you can get one out by themselves and you can get one here, one there, one here, one there, one there. Well, guess what? They're all divided. They're all scattered. And it's easy to take down each one of them alone. Why? Because they don't have backup. They don't have anybody to support them, to help them. They're out there all by themselves. I don't know if you're one of those people who like to watch nature videos. I'm one of them. I love to see lions and see how they maneuver. Uh, out in nature, right? In their environment, out in the wild. And so oftentimes you'll see a sad video where you got one line that went out maybe to go uh, get a kill and to go bring food back for the prime, right? In the process, he came across a pack of hyenas or wild dogs. And what did they do? They swarmed around that one line who went out to go get food for the pride and bring it back. They swarm around that one line and you know what happens. They devour that line. Why? Because the line was stuck out there by himself. He didn't have his pride with him. And you also see the videos where you see one line out there that's in trouble and he's roaring and one of somebody from his pride hears his roar, right? And he is at the brink, on the brink of being devoured by hyenas or whatever it could be, right? Even other lines. And what happened? Somebody, one line in his pride heard his roar and you see these videos where this one line was out here alone getting ready to be devoured and backup came, just one came and that one came, that came together, they defended themselves and they were able to stop this line from getting his life lost out there. Why? Because he was out there by himself, but when backup came... It was a different story. What am I talking about today? Satan often likes to use things to divide the body of Christ, such as politics. That's a touchy one because you're seeing a lot today. And the problem is, is that with both parties, there's good and there's bad. There's going to be good and there's going to be bad anywhere with anything. And so in the body of Christ, there's division because this group supports this that this group despises, right? But then this group repels something that this group also dislikes. As a result, it becomes hard for the body of Christ, the members in the body of Christ to stand united when it comes to politics. Here's another one for you, the age old race baiting, the race issue that you will see. And you see this even to this day, you will see that Satan will use race to divide the body of Christ. He did it then and it worked then. And he's still trying that same old trick right now to get white people to turn against black people, to get black people to turn against white people, to get everybody, the Hispanics to turn against the Chinese people, to get everybody to turn against each other. Why? Because united we stand, but divided we fall. The enemy loves to use these things because he understands that if he can get us to separate, if he can stop us from getting together, then what happens is we will all be out here just like the lone lion that's out there trying to go get food for his pride. And Satan knows that they can just team up on somebody who was once a member in the body of Christ, but has now become an island. He can team up and, and the demons, Satan and his imps can team up on somebody and devour them. Why? Because they separated from their pack, which in this story, I'm telling you, and what for the purpose of this message, the pack is the body of Christ. God wants us to understand the tactic that Satan is using to divide us and to not let it work. Now, 
Again, Ecclesiastes tells you there is a time for love and a time for hate, a time for war and a time for peace. There is a time for that. These things are necessary. Each one of these things, love, hate, war, and peace, they're all necessary. But that does not mean that as the body of Christ, we have to divide, right? I want to give you some scriptures. Turn with me in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. Go down to the ninth verse, Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. What is this scripture telling you? What it's telling you is it's better for man to be with someone. And the scripture said it's not good. God said it's not good for man to be alone. This scripture is telling you why it's not good for man to be alone. This scripture is telling you why we can stand when we are united. But a lot of people will take the scripture of God said it's not good for man to be alone and think that it automatically means that we should all be married or in dating relationships. No, what happens is in the body of Christ, we should be together. As Bishop Rosie O'Neill would say, we are better together. So what happens is in the body of Christ, when we stick together, right, with the bond of peace, when we stick together in the body of Christ, guess what happens? We get good return on our labor. So when you see one person that's working in the church, and they have nobody to help them. It can be 24 hours of their labor that they did a task that they took by themselves to complete a task and together with help, it could have been done in four hours or three hours or two hours. What is the scripture telling you? If one of us falls down in the body of Christ, it's important for us to be together because we can help that one get up. We can support that one who just lost a spouse. We can support the one who just lost a child. We can support the one who fell down from addiction. We can support the one that's in an abusive relationship and decided to get out. We can support the one who is trying to get sober. We can support the widow. We can support each other as we fall down. Why? Because Bishop Rosie O'Neill said it best. We are better together. Let's keep going. Why is it important for us to stay together in the body of Christ? Because if two lie down together, how will they keep warm? What does that mean? When it gets cold out here in this world and we have things that happen to us because God never promised us that bad things wouldn't happen. He just told us that all things will work together for the good of us, right? And so what happens is when it gets cold out here in this world and something bad happens and we get traumatized, one of us, together we can keep that person from going astray. Together we can keep that person warm in the body of Christ because even though they have experienced something out here in this cold, cruel world, there is love in the body of Christ to keep them warm. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And you saw this with the Montgomery bro. This is how God wants us to be in the body of Christ. Except he don't want it. He wants us to be together. He wants us to do the same thing that we saw in the Montgomery bro. When you see one going down and they are being overpowered and you see multiple people attacking one person, he expects for us in the body of Christ he expects for us to come to the defense and to defend that one. Why? Because the scripture says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And get this, it gets better. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And so when we get in the body of Christ and the world tries to push their agenda on us, and what they're doing is taking one, uh, one pastor one mega preacher and getting him to support the world's agenda and then getting another to support the world's agenda and getting another to support the world's agenda. Well, while those may go astray, guess what? In the body of Christ, God wants us to be like a braid. How many of you have seen, how many of you are familiar with braids? Uh, what happens is when we get extensions in our hair and we'll get braids, 
Here's what happens. The braid doesn't come undone. When you seal the braid properly, when the braid is, is done correctly, the braid won't come undone. But what will happen is it may slip out. But it ain't going to come undone. This is how God wants us to be in the body of Christ against Satan and his tactics. He wants us to stand united and to not be divided based upon Satan and his tactics and the things that he uses. Race, politics, uh, ethnicity, genealogy. I'm from this tribe. No, I'm a this person. No, I'm a Hebrewite. No, I'm a I'm an Israelite. No, I'm this. I'm that. God said, nah, -uh. none of that in the body of Christ together. United we stand and divided we fall. God did say that it's not good for man to be alone, but the remedy for everybody is to come into the body of Christ. And if you will come into the body of Christ, whether you're single or you're married, whether you're coming to, if you will come into the body of Christ, Christ, you will see that you are not alone. As Bishop Rosie O'Neill said, we are better together. United we stand, divided we fall. Let me give you this quick scripture and then I'm going to let you go. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter and the 30th verse says, how could one man chase a thousand or two put 10,000 to flight? You will hear it said like this, that one man can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. We are better together. Don't let Satan and his tactics cause us to divide in the body of Christ. God wants us to be just like a braid. A braid does not come undone when it is done the right way. That thing stays together. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves and a quarter of three strands is not quickly broken. United we stand, divided we fall. I love you. Happy Wednesday. I am Grace Amber. I hope that word blessed you. I will be right back on tomorrow with another word. Very good Lord willing.